Well, greetings once again from Wyoming. Today I'm going to talk about texturing a little bit. And um, a while ago I did a video on the Sorby texturing tools, and you can look at those for a little bit more detail. Today I'm going to work on the very center of these. I've been working on some of these bowls, and I've been posting pictures on Facebook, and I've gotten a lot of response. Uh, and a lot of questions, you know, what kind of dye do you use, what kind of, you know, this and that. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail. And what I do in the center of these bowls, and I'm going to show you a close-up of some of them in just a second. So some of these bowls I have in different stages of completion. This is just a little bit with the center done. And... This is another one that I have no color in at all, and I'll show you a close-up of this. But I'm going to go off the lathe and do some of the work, and I'll show you that in a bit. Now the first thing I'm going to do is a little work on this rim. I'm going to true it up with a bowl gouge. If you look at the very bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the top of my dust collection chute. And you'll also see the dust being drawn toward that chute. It's very important not to breathe this dust long term. It's very dangerous. Now the first thing I'm going to do is a little engraving with my Living Art engraver. I got this from Craft Supply. I just have a, a rotary cutter on there. It's a little bit of a sphere. So I'm going to do a little bit of freeform carving on this. Now as we look at different ways to decorate a bowl or any kind of wood turning project, um, I want to give a mention to Trent Bosch who lives in Colorado in Loveland and he's got a very good DVD on uh, texturing and decorating a bowl and uh, this is one of the things he did and I've done this before on wood and that's just to use a little fire. I don't need to mention to be very very safe here. I got my lathe cleaned off and I'm going to just burn the rim where I've uh, done a little bit of carving on this. This really does not work with your lathe spinning. Now I just inspect that and make sure that's fairly even all the way around. This piece of wood here is probably willow or birch or something really, really soft. And um, the bowls I'm going to work on later are ash, which is a little bit hard. But you're best off having soft maple or maple, uh, birch, aspen, something like that. That's a little bit softer and that takes good decoration in the center. So. One thing you can do at this point, uh, I really have just, just a little bit of uh, residue from the burning there. You can spray some shellac or some other kind of matte finish on that just to seal that. Okay, wait till it's uh, cooled off certainly. And then we'll go on to the next step. I'm going to clean out the inside of this bowl and do a little sanding. Okay, now the very bottom of my bowl in the center, I want to put some detail on here. Then I'm going to do a little texturing on top of that. So I will do that right now with a few different tools. I'm going to start out with a beading and parting tool. Yes. Now this particular tool here is a point tool. And let's just put a little bit of detail right there. Now this is a beading tool. It's a Dave Schweitzer tool. Dave Schweitzer lives out on the west coast, uh, Oregon or Washington. Anyway, I love his tools. He's got, he's got some great tools. So this is a beading tool. I'll just put a little, little bead in here.
Now you've no doubt heard me mention Nick Agar. Uh, he's a British turner. He'll do this particular detail and cover this entire inside of the bowl with different decorations. Uh, I'm going to put one more ring right here. Now I have another video on the Sorby texturing tool and I'm not going to highlight that. What I really want to do is a little bit of texturing and then I'm going to take this off the lathe and show you how to use some other tools to decorate the inside of your bowl. So I'm going to turn about uh, 500, 600 RPM, that looks like about 550. And let's do one more, just a little bit right here. Pretty easy, really. Okay, now before I take this off the lathe, I'm going to do a little bit of coloring with some markers. These are made by Dick Blick. And I'm not making that name up. If you're not familiar with the Dick Blick catalog, it's an art catalog, really, really awesome. It's kind of, kind of like having uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's, one of those stores, right on your computer. And I like these, so I'm going to do just a little bit of coloring on my texturing. And I might just use the same color all the way through to begin with. People often comment, you make it look so easy. Well, you know what? It's just this easy. I've had my small granddaughters do this sort of thing. Not, not the tool work, but the coloring. Now I'm just putting a little bit different color on top of that for some contrast. And this is another marker that I really like. This is uh, made by Pentel. Now I'm gonna just take my marker and highlight some of the grooves I've put in there. I'm probably in the way of the camera. There we are. Now I think at this point this is getting a little bit fussy. I probably have too much going on in this. And the nice thing about doing this sort of work is you can take some of that off. You can sand it off or turn it off. Uh, this is a demonstration and please keep that in mind. So I'm going to take this off the lathe and go to a workbench. Now probably six months or so ago I got a hold of an ash tree or a part of an ash tree and I roughed out a number of these bowls. They're dry, they're probably eight or nine percent moisture content and I sell my work. I try to make a little money. So this little eight inch bowl right here, I might get 30 or 40 bucks for it. Okay, if I put a little texture and color in that and spend another hour on it, might get a hundred dollars. So I'm going to show you some of the bowls I've been working on and this one is fairly complete not on the back side. I need to take the tenon off in all these bowls so kind of doing the inside the texturing coloring I'll put some sort of a, a matte finish on that and I want to show you that right here. This is a Krylon product and I just got this in my Ace Hardware store and um, it seals the wood especially when you're doing some burning on the outside like I did here it'll seal that and if you try to brush something on this the color might bleed so I've got a little bit of texturing on in there this is gilt cream right in the center of this and I sprayed this color with my airbrush and I got this dye from Stuart McDonald. Now this stain goes by uh, like metal complex dye or something like that but it's on the Stuart McDonald website which is stumac.com and I use this a lot. This will mix up a couple quarts of color. Okay and it looks like that. Really like that and you can get this at Woodcraft, not this brand but you can get the same kind of dye at Woodcraft in those stores. So let me show you a couple more bowls I've been working on. That's another one. I like this a lot. I like the, uh, the color combination. And the gold, this is uh, liquid gold leaf around those two rings. And that came out pretty well. 
and I've got the uh, the rim also burned on that. The ash is a really good wood to take a wire rotary brush on a drill and uh, kind of carve out that soft grain, get some nice texture. There's another another bowl, a little bit deeper, and again I used uh, my airbrush to kind of blend that together. And I'm kind of an amateur when it comes to an airbrush, but I did okay. Now if you have an interest in airbrushing, I would recommend checking out David Nittman and his website. He's a master with uh, the airbrush and you can find all kinds of really good products on his website. This is one that's still kind of in the works. And I'm not sure about the rim, I kind of left that a uh, little bit funky where it's uh, warped. So we'll see what happens with that. Somebody might like that. And this one I really like this, and I'm not sure about the coloring, I'm going to be real careful about that because um, I like the design, it looks really, really nice, and you can mess it up if you know, go too far and do too much to something like that. So anyway, let me put my, my other bowl up here, and we'll do a little bit of work on that. Now doing this kind of texturing and decorating of a bowl is all about contrast, light and dark and uh, different textures and that sort of thing. Most anyone can tell this has been done on a lathe, even if you're not a wood turner. But if, certainly if you are a wood turner, you know that this was done by some sort of uh, tool when the piece was spinning. Now I'm gonna put some decoration in this that uh, will be a little bit contrasting to that uh, circular pattern on here. And I'm going to use a couple point tools. Let's start with the bigger. Let's start with the bigger point tool. I think I'm going to put a indentation right in the center of this. And I hope this camera angle is all right. All right. And I'm just I have no idea what I'm going to do. Just put a couple indentations in here and the way you get these all the same is to hit your tool same number of times with each indentation you make and they should all be fairly similar you don't want them to be identical you could do it with a machine now I think I'll take my, my smaller point tool and I might go in the other direction with my leading point on that. The other thing I want to do is, is keep the same angle. Okay, this angle all the way around. And I'm probably blocking your view a little bit. So, start to get the idea. This next tool, and you can, you can go into your toolbox and get a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, or a straight screwdriver, or any other kind of small tool that can be used to do this. Um, and they're there already, you don't have to buy anything. Um, so this is a, actually a leather working tool. And I'm not sure where I'll put this, but I want to I wanted to use this just a little bit. We'll, we'll connect these. And sometimes you don't know what this is going to look like till you do it. A nail set, and it's a really big nail set with a little bit of a dimple in the center of it. So let's let's do a nail set right here. And we'll just go around this inner inner circle. And at this point you have to eyeball this. I've got room for two more, so I want to space those little circles around there. There we go. All right. And the last tool I want to I want to show you. This is um, like a star driver. 
it's like a Phillips or a regular um, bit that you use to drive a screw. And this is a star bit on this rim right here. You can't see that, I'm sure. Okay, as I said before, I got way too much going on here. But this is just, this is not going to end up on anybody's uh, gallery shelf. Now this is something called Yolk Cream. And it's made by Liberon. Liberon makes a lot of nice uh, finishing products like steel wool that doesn't have any oil in it. And a couple different colors. Uh, I think maybe I'll use the darker one. This is something that Nick Agar popularized. And I'm just going to use my finger. Now one thing you can do is you can apply this and if you don't like it you can uh, you know you can turn it away but you can also take another tool and clean up the outside where you where you put this on and I'll often stain this which I didn't do I'll often stain this surface so I get a nice contrast but you don't want to go down into the indentations where the color is a little bit different so that gives you an idea with the gilt cream. As far as finishing, I would spray something on this. Uh, I would not wipe on a, um, like a wipe on poly. I wouldn't do it that way. I'd spray something. Shellac, lacquer, and then hopefully it won't bleed. So there we go. That's a mess. I, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Um, we're just kind of experimenting and you need to do that in your shop. Just go out and see if you like something, the next one will be better. But you get the idea of what we're doing here. Thanks for tuning in.